Sleepy Hollow Season 3, Episode 14, Into the Wild. I really like this episode for some of this really cool stuff that they did. For one, we find out, of course, what the symbol actually is. They did something that was actually pretty cool. They just took it to an expert, like, this person knows about this stuff. And we find out that this symbol that they found is actually two pieces of a whole. Like, it, it splits into two, just like the tablets, which were totally brought up. I couldn't believe Ichabod even had those, because when he pulled, they did the flashback, I was like, okay, so he can go back and see that. And then he just pulled them out, I was like, oh. I was like, why did he have those with him? Like, I understood, of course, the symbol, but it was so weird that he took the tablets as well, and they didn't have it in there. It was just like, oh, he just had them with him. I was like, all right, I guess that makes sense, but... I don't know, for safekeeping, maybe, because nobody was going to be in the archives or something, but it was like, oh, he actually had the tablets with him, because I was like, otherwise, no need to really show the flashback if he just had them. I guess to remind people, like, these are the tablets, because we haven't seen those tablets, I think, since they found them, I think, which was before the mid-season finale, so I don't think they have, I think that was like one episode, and they showed them once, and then they talked about them a bit, like, oh, we're meant to do more. But they never, I guess they never did really show him again. So I guess it makes sense to show that flashback. But it was weird that he had them, but they end up being keys. And they actually link him psychically uh, to Abby, which I thought was very cool. So we find out that this whole little thing that seemingly was like a weapon of evil was actually a weapon of good. And seem, you know, based on how it was connecting with Abby... I'm guessing in some form it's conscious, you know, magically conscious, I guess, is a good way to put it. And so it was trying to say like, hey, we're super connected because you're a witness and I'm the key to the ultimate weapon for witnesses against evil. And I mentioned before, it's either going to be a weapon that everyone can get or it's going to be a weapon to go up against the hidden one. And fortunately, um, a lot less tension, but I, I feel like they need less tension sometimes because I feel like there's always... I feel like for this show, it's always right in the middle. It's like the bad guys can get it or the good guys can get it. And finally, they just have their own thing. Uh, the villain's going to have their own thing too. So I think that's something they've kind of established for this season. Because Pandora, of course, had Pandora's box. So that was her own thing, which has shifted a little bit uh, when we find out in this episode that a piece of it is actually being bid on, which was very good. It was one of my favorite things as well, what that ended up leading to. But, you know excuse me, the villains have their own thing, and now Abby and Ichabod have some weapon. We know we still don't know what it is, but we find out this symbol isn't bad. It's actually kind of been attached to Abby as a witness, because it's, I guess it's been trapped in this other dimension, and so finally one of the witnesses is there, so it was able to, like, latch on to her pretty much and be like, hey, finally the weapon's out here, you know, to vanquish all evil. Which, with it converging on Sleepy Hollow, they're definitely going to need that. So, I was really glad to see that it was a weapon just for them. And it's not like, oh, it's a race against, you know, the hidden one in Pandora. Which I don't think is going to matter anyway. Because clearly, they have shown that this is going to end up being a triangle of war. Because Pandora is... Every episode, like, they kind of tease it's like, okay, he's being a bit of a dick. And then every episode, it's like, there's a little extra thing that the Hidden One does. And in this one, it's like, she gets attacked by Joe after he turns into, partly turns into the Wendigo, which I completely forgot ever happened. I thought this was something brand new, and then they talked about it. I was like, oh yeah, he did. That did happen a long time ago, which was probably only the last season. I don't believe that was season one, but it, it might have been. But I completely forgot that happened, but... When she gets scratched by him because he's not a part of, like, the creatures that they created and also the box wasn't whole, the hidden one is just like, your failure has made me realize that I have to destroy the witnesses. And I love that scene because it's like, you know, you can't control these monsters. Like, you need more power in order to control these monsters and so we can succeed. And she's like, yes. And she's like, sticks her hand out. And I thought it was going to happen right there because I thought he was going to be like, you know, basically say what he said right there and kind of brush her hand off. But she stands up and everything is like, yes. And it's like, I have to destroy the witnesses. It's like, hmm. Like, um, that's not what you were supposed to do. That was the face she made. She was like in complete shock. Just like, huh? Like, that's not where this is supposed to be going. And then it's just like, yep, you're absolute failure. And then just like shove her aside. It's like, that has let me know 
you're useless, I need to do this crap myself. And he just ignores her and it's just like, the last time he was an absolute a-hole, like, here's a little bit of power, that may have been the one episode before, but like, here's a, a bit of power, now suffer like I've suffered, like, that's her fault or something, like, he, he was just being a dick. And then the love thing, like, love is super weak and, you know, we don't need to be equals and then... I guess it was the last episode because the love thing was the one before that. So it, it was just crazy. Like every episode, it's clear that they're building up Pandora and she's got a part of her box back. So maybe she'll have more pieces to kind of rebuild it. They have the Sands of Time, which seemingly haven't really done that much. I guess that's what allowed him to do the weird like teleportation thing at the end, I guess, because it was a bit more power. But I thought the Sands would do way more. Like, so far, it was like they had him in a scene, and it was a cool-looking hourglass, and Sand was falling, and nothing happened. And I was like, okay, well, they really needed that, and that's why they had the whole Jersey Devil thing. And it was just like, mm, nothing. They just showed a scene, so I guess it'll show. It'll have more importance a bit later when he's, when the Hidden Ones, I guess, at full strength, or at least more power than currently. But... It's clear, it's very clear they're making, they're going to end up making it like a triangle war type thing. Or Pandora's going to end up teaming up with, you know, the team to take out the hidden one. And maybe at that point he will have full power, which will still be more powerful than Pandora. So, however they're doing it, I don't know if it'll, you know, it could be that type of thing. But I feel like it'll be a three-way sort of deal and she'll still want to have her own power, or maybe she won't, maybe she will decide, like, I'll take him down, and then maybe she'll want to live a normal life, because she does want the whole love and equal, you know, sort of thing, and she's certainly not getting that, after everything she's done for him, all these monsters, all this stuff, millennia, and he's just like, yep, I'm gonna take your power, and give you, like, a, a little taste, so you can suffer like I suffer, because I'm sure he'd still have more than enough strength if he gave her all of her power back, because seemingly the big deal is, like, He's way stronger than her, but he just kind of treats her like crap. So, of course, you know, his his reckoning is close. His reckoning, I'm sure, is very, very close, and he doesn't even <laughs> realize what he's doing. But I'm very excited to see that. Every time I watch an episode, if I have to catch it on Hulu, uh, which I did for this one, every time that happens when he does something, I read the comments, and it's always like, I can't wait for her to kill him, or yeah, I can't wait for him to realize how stupid he's been and, you know, just get wiped out by Pandora. So, I think they're doing, you know, they're definitely doing it on purpose and she's going to get powerful and maybe she'll be able to do it herself. Maybe she will have to team up uh, with our heroes to take him down and then she'll be back at number one as the main villain. But, we'll see what happens. I'm definitely looking forward to that because I do want her to just destroy him. They're definitely doing a great job of making him an easy-to-hate character. So, I'm certainly enjoying that every time he does something, it's just like, wow, it's going to be, it's like a great way to build up a villain, where it's like, as soon as they defeat him, it's, it's going to be like the most satisfying thing for everyone watching, because it's like, even as a villain, we feel for Pandora because of how dickish this guy's been, and it's like, wow, that's a great way to make you satisfied when finally they defeat the main villain, because it's like, he's just a dick on the... A relationship level not even as just a mass villain it's like just on the relationship level it's like you hate this guy so they're doing a great job of making all of us hate him i think so looking forward to his demise if they do it by the end of the season you know because how they like to kind of play with stuff where it's like the villain will survive until the middle of the next season or something like that so we'll see how that goes because i didn't think we were going to get anyone um, outside of Pandora, and then they added the hidden one, it was like, oh, that added a villain instead of, you know, having, like, you know, the one season thing. So they always find some way to mix it up at least a little bit, whether it's creating a whole new villain, like how they did with Moloch in the middle of the season, kill him off, or like this, add a new villain in the middle of the season, and then we have two, and then this new relationship, you know, with them, so... Definitely looking forward to whatever happens there. And then the stuff with Joe I thought was really, really surprising. Very cool. The whole Wendigo thing. Like I said, uh, when I first saw it, because I completely forgot about all the Wendigo stuff that ever happened to him, I just thought she's like, you were, basically, he was, for whatever reason, an actual monster on the inside. But then it's like, no, it's the Wendigo stuff is still technically a part of him. 
And I was like, oh, okay, that I forgot about that. So not as insanely epic because I thought they were introducing something. They were just reintroducing something. But that was still really a great scene. Like, despite that having, you know, piggybacked off of something that already existed, it was still really great to see that happen. Because at first, I just thought, like, oh, okay, it, you know, kind of the magic went into him, and that's why he transformed. That was the first thing I thought. And then what she said made me think something insanely crazy. Like, they were introducing this whole new element of him actually being, like, part monster or something crazy. And then it's like, no, that evil is still in there. And... I'm pretty sure once Pandora gets her box, that's going to be one of the first things she does because, of course, he's going to be going up against her with the rest of the team. He's not going to, you know, back down and just leave everyone else to do it. So, at some point, I assume she's going to get her box completely made. She'll be at full power. And then, maybe even in human form, she could just draw the Wendigo straight out of him and just, with a snap of a finger, just turn him into the Wendigo and kind of send him after everyone. So... Looking forward to that. If it does happen, it may or may not happen, I don't know. But I was also very happy that Joe didn't die because this was the second time I thought that in a row for an episode. I was like, I feel like something crazy is going to happen. Or maybe not in a row, but it's the second time I was like, I feel like he might die here because I think he might, you know, transform and they might have to kill him in this episode. So they, I don't know if that means they're going to do that or they just it just happens to be scenes where i'm just thinking like i feel like he might die here it could just be me of course but i really hope that doesn't happen that would really suck because i feel like they don't need to destroy like that relationship also i like joe as a character because they built like with this season they did like the whole team thing especially well the last season they really built it up and stuff and then this season they made it like the standard is that every you know it's a full team because we had um I can't remember the guy's name, but the other guy that Jenny knew, like the other, the Relic Hunter guy, who hasn't shown up at all this season, um, so I don't know, you know, what the deal is with that. I, I want to say his name is Holly. I feel like that's his name, but with that guy, he was like in some episodes as a part of the team, and then we had Irving, of course, who was a main member, unfortunately, you know, every how everything played out, where Orlando Bloom, or Orlando Jones, Orlando Bloom is a totally different human being, Orlando Jones left the show. But they've really established the team stuff, so hopefully he doesn't die. But they certainly did a great job with that. I love the creature in this episode. Definitely awesome. Loved the visuals for that. Very, It looked really gross and the worm stuff. Definitely gave me um, vibes of the series The Strain, for anyone who hasn't seen that. Basically, people get infected through worms. So as soon as I saw that and I was like, that guy got bitten, worms was coming out. I was like, ah, oh, it's just like The Strain. Creatures don't look nearly as gross until they like open their faces up in that show but love the visuals love how that all played out um abby and danny kind of had their talk and you know things interesting there how they might may or may not work out in the future if abby leaves or danny leaves but enjoyed this episode definitely want to know what you guys thought about it so please comment below let me know your favorite parts your least favorite parts definitely want to know what you guys thought about uh what they did with joe and him changing and what you guys think might happen in the future. And of course, what you guys think is going to happen between the Hidden One and Pandora. Because I think she's going to kill him. Not sure where she'll go after that, but that's what I think. But I want to know what you guys think about it. And what you guys thought about the episode in general. So please comment below, let me know. And thanks for watching.